Hi and welcome back to another vlog. I don't think this will be a weekly vlog, I think we'll do just a vlog for a few days. Today it is Monday, it is the 13th of February. I think I've been mentioning a lot that I had the flu, <laughs> which I think can be a little bit tiring to listen to, but I'm almost there, I'm almost my old self, but because I also have a chronic illness, I don't usually get more sick than other people do, but it does take a really long time for me to get better. I am now two weeks in and you can still hear my nose is very nasal. Boy, my husband got sick later than I did and he's all better now. So I always need a little bit more time. Of course, it's important to take care of myself mentally. So something that I use to deal with illness, whether that is a flare-up, chronic illness or getting better from the flu is always getting back in my routine, which is really helpful to me. I am a little routine animal. <laughs> I thought I would sit here this morning. I made a black orange tea, which is one of my favorite teas to drink in the morning. And I thought we could chat about the books that I'm currently reading and kind of the reading I want to do in the next three days. My main priority is going to be The Garden Party by Catherine Mansfield. I read one short story of this last night. The short story that I read was about two spinsters who lose their father. This is all said um, kind of turn of the century, beginning of the 20th century. It is very clear that these two spinsters have always lived under the protection of their father and now that he has died they try to fill in their own world and their own habits and you can just sense how incompetent they are in doing so. It was actually quite funny. I did see some similarities with Virginia Woolf which was of course the reason why I wanted to read Catherine Mansfield but I can see how her writing is a little bit more accessible which is great for me now. My plans for today are to do some embroidery because I started uh, a new project and to listen to most of these short stories which should be fun and then another thing I want to do this week wrap the very big book yes another thing I want to do this week is read another chapter of the Brontes I've been trying to read one chapter a week which has worked out sometimes and sometimes it doesn't because I do notice every time I read a chapter of this the chapters are about 40 pages long that it's about all the reading I can do that day. So if I have other reading plans for a day, I usually don't really want to read this because I know it takes all my reading energy out of me. But I'm currently on chapter 14 and that is called Isolated in the Midst of Numbers. I do really want to read this bit because I think this bit is about Emily and Charlotte going to Brussels and I already found out something I didn't know and that is that Patrick traveled with them. Um, I think it is often portrayed as that they went on this adventure, just the two of them. But that's not true because Patrick traveled with them and he stayed in Brussels for a week to look after them to see that they were fine before he traveled back to England. I think it further shows that he was not the distant father a lot of biographers make him out to be. Of course, I still need to read the whole thing before I can draw my conclusions on that part, but I have always been in the Patrick isn't that bad camp, <laughs> which is one of the reasons why I really don't want to read Charlotte Bronte's biography written by um, Elizabeth Keskel because she makes him out to be this big villain. So I'm excited to read the chapter on their first bits where they are in Brussels. I have to say there are parts of this book that I'm kind of skimming through and those are the parts of Renewal. Not necessarily like the facts on his life, but of course because the biography is so big, the author shows a lot of his uh, letters and I read a few and I found him so agitating. He is such a manipulative, narcissistic person in his letters that I kind of skim through them because I just I just can't with Bramwell okay kind of skim through those which helps me get to the chapters faster but still it takes me a whole day to read a chapter I think I might do that tomorrow because today I want to prioritize the garden party and then I think my kind of most important read of this month is Romola by George Eliot I have divided like you can see there are a lot of little tabs um, I've divided it up in days. My plan is to start, it's kind of to start today, but will I? Will I? <laughs> um, and I will read, I think it's about 20 pages. I think it's four chapters a day. These chapters are really, really short. And I divided them in the way that Mary divided them for us in the Discord. So then every day I can leave a little message in the Discord if I have thoughts on these chapters. And then I will be done around the time we will probably have the live show. Bella is playing so cute in the background. <laughs> She's just playing by herself. I love my cats. They have two siblings and still they mostly just play on their own with like a toy. It is so cute. But I will read about four chapters every day and then 
what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I've noticed that when doing live shows, I really prefer to finish the book like a few days before the live show. Otherwise, I've read a bunch of other books and I don't really feel that motivated to talk about the book anymore because I'm the kind of person who just wants to scream about a book after finishing it. So I definitely want to do that with this book. Although I do want to give myself one or two days to read um, the introduction of this book. I know this book is difficult so part of me thinks I should read the introduction beforehand but then it will have spoilers. I know it will have spoilers. Maybe I will ask in a discord what people recommend. Okay today's plans. Listen to as much as I can of this and then read my daily part of Romola. I will check in with you tomorrow to let you know how that went. And I want to kind of finish my embroidery today as well. I should actually do some laundry too, but will I? I'm not sure. I will give these little kittens some attention because all of them are crowding around me right now. <gasps> Look at mommy god, yes. Oh my gosh, excitement. <laughs> Boy got something really nice. He got this diffuser that has different scents and he got a whole um, array of scents and I'm enjoying it a lot. Nora, don't you dare. Don't you dare, that's her new carpet. Yes, I've been enjoying that a lot because I like scented candles but they're not very good for your lungs so I think this will be like less heavy on your lungs because it's just water. Right now my favorite scent has to be either jasmine or grapefruit. So I will put that on while I'm embroidering and listening to the garden party. Yes, I should have a relaxing day with my tea as well. Um, and I will check in again with you tomorrow. Catherine Hunslet, The Garden Party, narrated by Helena Mitchell. And after all, weather was ideal. They could not have had a more perfect day for a garden party if they could order it. It's the next day, it's Tuesday, and I woke up so early this morning. Boy's alarm went off at 6 o'clock, and usually my brain kind of knows that it's not my alarm, so I wake up and I fall back asleep. But this morning, I woke up, and I just woke up, so by 7 o'clock in the morning, I was downstairs, and that is super early for me, because if I get up really early, I usually have to take a nap in the afternoon to be able to manage my spoons, so I just sleep in most mornings so they don't have to take a nap during the day so i will probably have to take a nap after lunch boys working from home today so maybe go get lunch somewhere go out of the house that'd be nice i would love a gluten-free bagel somewhere mm. okay plans but first reading so i've read most of the short stories or listened to most of the short stories of the garden party and i definitely can see why the garden party is the title of the collection because that story so far is the best it's not the longest of all the stories i think at the bay which is the first short story in this collection is the longest and that one is just different chapters on people who live at the bay and their lives different people from different backgrounds i'm not sure i need to Google Catherine Mansfield because I think a lot of these short stories are set in Australia which really took me a long while to notice because the whole feel of the short stories is so British. I'm guessing that Catherine Mansfield was British but she lived or grew up in Australia 
something like that. I don't think I've read a lot of short stories that are set in Australia. In the garden party we have this high-born young lady who throws a garden party. Something happens to one of the people who lives in the cottages and she's wondering whether it's appropriate for her to keep going with her garden party. And she has this discussion of class with her family but also with herself. And it has some funny twists and turns in the short stories. If you're looking for a short story that the garden party is definitely one I would recommend because it's, it's quite interesting. And then talking about interesting, I did read my pages for Romola yesterday. So I am now 59 pages in and this is so good. This is so fun. Um, the first chapter, or it's not a chapter, it's like a prologue. It's just George Eliot having a main character who is a spirit. I think a spirit from the past who is looking at Venice, how it is looking right now. And he is appalled by everything that he sees. And the description it's so atmospheric I'm really really enjoying it and then once the book start once the first chapter start we follow a man called the stranger who has survived a shipwreck meets all of these people and like us he is introduced into this world and into the daily life of the people who live here which I love we have all these little details of daily life which is like my sweet spot when it comes to historical fiction I love a slow introduction into a historical world and I feel like George Eliot had such fun writing this so we meet different characters but I think the most important characters we've met so far is a scholar and his daughter Romola clearly because the book is called Romola and when we meet them in their first chapter when it's just them you can see that gender is going to play an important part in Romola's life it is about Romola and her father who is a scholar and one of the first conversations they have um, has these quotes with my son to aid me I might have had my due share in triumphs too proud to obtrude consolation in words that might seem like a vindication of her own value yet wishing to comfort him by some sign of her presence that is what she says in response um, in that chapter so her father values her for who she is but she has a different value than a man um, especially intellectually which I think is kind of special that she helps her father because he is blind and she reads all the texts to him um, so she is as educated as a son could be. I'm really enjoying this and also not enjoying all of the short stories some are maybe a little bit too vague i think um i had planned to read the brontes today but i'm definitely not in a mood to do that this morning i started by playing a game boy is a big gamer so i played one of his games and i just used the easiest mode <laughs> because i'm a terrible gamer but i had a lot of fun and i don't like to read early in the morning because it just makes me very sleepy and I wanted to do something of course because I was up so early. For now I'm going to have lunch and hopefully read my pages of Romola and finish the garden party. <laughs> Wednesday I just had some lunch and this morning I spent the morning with Mary which was so lovely she hosted some reading sprints on her patreon and she invited us girls to join and I was free this morning so I decided to join her and it was so nice to spend some time with Mary because I had missed her so I took the opportunity of the motivation of the reading sprints to read my weekly chapter of the Brontes and this may have been one of the best chapters so far I think I've mentioned earlier in this vlog that this chapter was about the time in Brussels and it's so interesting I know the next chapter is also still set in Brussels which I'm so happy about because I felt like the time that Charlotte and Emily spent in Brussels was my gap of knowledge when it came to the Brontes and this gave such great insight I don't know if you can see <laughs> all the orange tabs but that is all the chapter I tapped every single page I made some notes I underlined a lot of things I think if you know a little bit about that period of time with the Brontes you know that Monsieur Egar was a man that had a lot of influence on the way that Charlotte Bronte wrote in a sense that she based a lot of her male love interest on him which I think says not a lot of good things about him because her love interests are usually quite detestable men in my humble opinion but we got a lot about him as well and the next chapter is even called Monsieur Egard which 
can't wait to read it. But this also talked about how his lessons to them helped Charlotte develop her writing style and Emily wasn't that well developed in French yet so it didn't do as much for her development as a writer as it did for Charlotte but he I think made them translate certain bits and then write them in a narrative, in their own narrative. It sounds tedious, but apparently it really helped Charlotte develop a more clear narrative style in her writing, which like we should thank him for it because her narratives are beautiful. <laughs> I'm really happy that I was able to finish my weekly um, quota, I would say, which I'm almost on page 500, which don't get fooled, this is all notes. So I'm basically almost halfway through, which I'm I'm a little proud of myself. <laughs> I haven't finished Catherine Mansfield short stories yet, but I do have some cleaning to do today, so I will listen to those and probably finish it today. And then I will start some other books for my February TBR, which I am looking forward to. I think the one I'm most looking forward to is Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead, which is supposed to be a really great historical fiction. I'll probably read that next. For now, I'm going to edit and upload this vlog, and I'm going to do the cleaning that I need to do today. And tomorrow we will have the live show for Anna Mount and echoed so i'm really happy to see the girls again it's been a while and i hope to see you there too as well tomorrow i will leave a link in the description down below so you can join us if you want to our next book will be i'm going to read this in march i think will be the water dancer which is historical fiction as well i think it is a magical historical fiction so if you're intrigued for this one i will show you the back and you can pause if you would like to feel free to join us all the links are in the description down below but for now i want to thank you so much for watching this vlog i hope that you have a lovely lovely evening and i hope to see you in another video Doei!